Could he be any more clutch? I mean, could Lamont Wade Jr. be any more clutch? He has come through time and time again for the San Francisco Giants, and last night was no different. He has earned the nickname Late Night Lamont, Late Game Lamont, whatever it is. Uh, he very much deserves that nickname. What an acquisition he has been. What a huge win for the Giants as they maintain their one game lead over the Dodgers with 11 to play. So we'll talk about Wade Jr. We'll talk about this game and we'll talk about where things are in the standings with, you know, so little time remaining on today's Locked on Giants podcast. Locked On Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspik, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Greenroom. Download the app and join me on Sunday toward the end of the game to get in on the action. And coming up on today's show, as I said, wow, wow, we are going to talk about the heroics of Lamont Wade Jr. again. I mean, it was just a single at the end of the day. It's not like, you know, down to their last strike, down by three, bottom of the ninth, World Series Game 7. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. But the fact is that he's just done this over and over and over again. It really is something that I can't remember ever seeing someone to just come through in big situations like every single time. And that's what Wade Jr. did hit a little opposite field jam shot single just over the leaping head of her leaping glove of Fernando Tatis Jr. falls into left for a base hit. Brandon Belt, you know, aggressively uh, scores from second base. He had to hold up a little bit to see if Tatis would catch that ball but he scores. It was a close play at the plate. Mark Melanson, old friend, Mark Melanson on the mound here for the Padres. Belt scores, gives the Giants the lead in a game that was very up and down. And in fact, mostly down early on, the Giants trailed in this game four to one. And they came back with two in the fifth, two in the sixth. Padres get a run bottom six to tie it. And then the Giants, of course, take that one-run lead. And then things got extremely dicey in the ninth as well, uh, the bottom of the ninth, that is. And you've got Tatis up there in a big spot. You've got Machado up there in a big spot. And the Giants got through it. Tyler Rogers got through it, uh, closing this game out, filling in for the injured Jake McGee. So we'll get into all of that. But, you know, the the place I want to start is just kind of the breakout season of Lamont Wade Jr., and just what a great find he's been, which is an ongoing theme for this Giants front office since Farhan Zaidi took over at the end of the 2018 season. So Wade joins a number of other players who have broken out on, on the Giants' watch since that takeover, most notably Mike Yastrzemski, who was kind of the story of 2019 and 2020 for the Giants. Farhan Zaidi is also the guy who invited Max Muncie to come sign with the Dodgers, and we all know that story. So what an unbelievable track record Farhan Zaidi has of finding diamonds in the rough. And Lamont Wade Jr., clearly a diamond in the rough. They acquired him in the offseason in a trade that got very little attention, uh, sending Sean Anderson to the Minnesota Twins in exchange for Wade, just a straight one-for-one exchange. And Sean Anderson was quickly this year DFA'd by the Twins. He went into the Rangers organization, DFA'd there. He went to the Orioles organization, DFA'd there. And now the last I checked, he was actually with the Padres. And uh, I'm not sure if he's currently on the Major League roster. I actually want to look that up. 
because if he's in the opposing dugout, that just kind of adds not insult to injury necessarily. It looks like he's not currently. So I don't know what happened. I, I suppose that he was either optioned. Yeah, he was optioned to the minors about a week ago. So Sean Anderson is in the Padres organization, but it's impossible to say the Giants didn't get the very best of that exchange. Sean Anderson, I mean, he was their top pitching prospect, uh, and he's a guy they acquired in the Eduardo Nunez deal back in 2017. But, you know, so when he came up with the Giants, he was their top pitching prospect, uh, but it didn't really work out all that well. He was starting and then he was relieving, kind of seriously had troubles with command as a reliever in 2020. And then they ship him off in the offseason. And again, it didn't get all that much attention, but Wade Jr. has just broken out on the Giants' watch. This season, Wade Jr. is hitting 264 with a 341 on base, 515 slugging. That's a 130 weighted runs created plus, meaning about 30% above average offense. He's got 18 home runs, and the big question with Wade was, is he going to hit for any power? We knew that he had a good approach. We knew that there was a good you know, minor league strikeout to walk ratio, a good minor league on base percentage. But the big question was, is he ever going to hit for power? Well, guess what? He's got a 251 isolated power, which is just well, well above the major league average, which is around 170. So, you know, he's 80 points above the league average in the power department, 18 home runs in 98 games. He's been a force for power. And so, I mean, it's obvious the Giants did very well to acquire Wade Jr. And just to speak to, you know, his contract status with the Giants, someone who's under club control for a long, long time. He is pre-arbitration eligible. So not that we celebrate players, you know, earning very little money on the show, but the fact is that, you know, in 2022, they can retain Lamont Wade Jr. for the league minimum salary of around $570,000. And that allows them to spend that money, those savings, when you have a bargain like that, you spend those savings elsewhere. And that's kind of how you build a good team because, you know, it'll again, you're, when you have a surplus it, and then you spend that excess money on somebody else, it, it only benefits the team. And so... You know, and he's under club control through the 2025 season, and he's a num he's one of a number of key kind of Giants players who have a similar uh, contract status in that they're under club control through that 2025 season. He joins uh, Mike Yastrzemski, Tyler Rogers, Logan Webb, and Stephen Duggar. All of those players can be controlled next year pre arbitration eligible, so league minimum salaries for those guys, and then they become arbitration eligible and they are due to get raises in arbitration in that case, assuming the good production continues. So what an assassin Lamont Wade Jr. has just been this season. His numbers in the ninth inning, I think he's 12 for 19, driven in 11 runs, OPS of like 1,600, which is just ridiculous stuff. Obviously a small sample, but I mean, as I said in the open, how clutch can one person be? I mean, it's just unreal the number of clutch hits and just how automatic it is for him in that situation. So coming up next, we'll we'll continue to talk about uh, Lamont Wade Jr., but also the rest of this game. There were some key defensive plays, including uh, a double play that ended the game, and it was a very kind of dicey moment there for a second in that ninth inning looked like the Giants were probably going to lose frankly but they came you know they came through it and it was a critical game obviously one game lead still by holding on with 11 to play and later on we'll talk too about why the Giants really really want to avoid that wild card game this episode is brought to you by Green Room Green Room is the first social audio platform Made for sports fans, the app is free to download, and once you're in, you can talk with me, other fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport. I'll be hosting rooms for Locked on Giants once a week. Yes, you can finally join in on the conversation you listen to here every day. You'll find fans just like you on Green Room for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and of course, reacting to big news or rumors. 
be sure to be sure to join me this weekend. I'll be hosting a room on Sunday toward the end of the game. Go download the free Green Room app now, currently available on all iOS devices. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the MLB group for the latest league updates. Follow me at Ben Kaspic to be notified when my room goes live. I know you won't want to miss it. I'm planning to be live on Sunday toward the end of the game. I can't wait to hear everyone's thoughts on the Giants. See you there. Green Room, changing the way we talk sports. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back to start another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, BetOnline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, baseball, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for, available for the 2021 season. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Promo code locked on. All right, as promised, we're going to wrap up the discussion about Wade Jr., get into the rest of the details from this game, and then eventually talk about where things stand. One game lead, 11 to play. Uh, the Dodgers. Kind of the Rockies had the Dodgers on the ropes last night, and unfortunately, they couldn't get the job done. So the Giants had to win if they wanted to maintain their one game lead, and they did. This team has just been unbelievably resilient. It's incredible how well that tagline has, you know, fit this team this season. They're 98 and 53. Uh, Padres, meanwhile, my goodness, just two games over 500. The, their season is basically over. They have to win pretty much every single game. So last night was critical for them. So we'll talk about that later on. But, you know, let's talk about the fact that Tommy LaStella led off this game with a home run against Joe Musgrove. Joe Musgrove is a really good pitcher having a really good season. And LaStella, which, you know, who I don't think people realize how much power he has. Every time he like hits a home run, I hear, you know, on the post game show or whatever, people act like shocked that Lestella hit a home run. Just because he doesn't have many this year doesn't mean he doesn't hit home runs. This guy hit like 16 home runs in half a season a couple years ago with the Angels. So obviously that's a pace over 30 home runs. So he's got power and uh, you know, the Giants, that's why that's not they didn't just sign this guy to be like a scrappy singles hitter. This is a team that values guys who hit the ball in the air, hit the ball hard in the air and hit for power. And La Stella is potentially a guy who can do that. I think we've seen enough of La Stella now to see what he is when he's at his best. And he's someone who obviously works the count, but he, he takes a big, healthy, aggressive swing a lot of the time. And he's going to run into some pitches, and that's what we saw leading off the game there. Giants had Joe Musgrove on the ropes, but Brandon Crawford hit a ball just foul that would have probably scored at least two and po possibly three runs in that first inning. So it could have been 4 nothing Giants, but instead it's a foul ball, and then he grounds into a double play, ending the inning. So Giants with a big wasted opportunity there. And then Kevin Gosman, let's talk about what happened with him for a second. He had a bad start. He went four innings, allowed nine hits, and four earned runs, three homers, all three on splitters. They were saying on the postgame show that Gosman has allowed five home runs on splitters all season, and three of them came in this game last night, two by Manny Machado, which is partially why having him up there in that huge spot in the ninth inning where the Giants turned that unbelievable double play was such a big deal. I mean, because not only is it Machado, and you're, he's always scary and dangerous, but he was on one in this game. I mean, he was on everything. Two home runs, like on identical pitches to, to an identical spot to the Western Metal Supply Company building in left field. And then he, he hit a ball to center that was maybe the best hit of all of them that – Mike Yastrzemski made a really good one. And so he was on everything last night. And in fact, the double play grounder he hit 
to end the game was hit 112 miles an hour, which is extremely hard hit. So, you know, why don't we just talk about that now for a second? The fact that Brandon Belt, who was, by the way, positioned perfectly, he was, you know, not even close to the first base bag. He was kind of in between first and second base, basically. I mean, he really was. So the positioning, we don't talk about that much on the show, but I've heard other people like Giants broadcasters talking about it. I should really look into it more myself. But from what they've been saying and what I've seen with my eyes, the Giants positioning has just been a huge part of their success this season, a part of their pitching success, a part of their defensive success. Guys are just in the right positions. And that ground ball by Machado was a perfect example of that. If Belt is playing a traditional first base and La Stella is playing a traditional second, that ball easily gets through and it probably ties the game because you had the tying run on second base. And the winning run would have moved up to at least second base. And so the fact that Belt was there meant everything. It meant everything to this Giants team because they turned it into a double play. Brandon Belt kind of kicked it up in his gloves and then he waits for it to come down, grabs it, fires a strike to Brandon Crawford, who kind of times his pass across the second base bag perfectly, uh, kicking the base along the way and just fires a rocket to Tyler Rogers covering the mound. And Rogers, he got there like just in time as, you know, it's very, very difficult to do, to run to the base and try to pay attention to making sure you're in position to like, you know, on the run, get to the base and stop and have your foot on the base and be looking towards second base while your shortstop is throwing his best bolt at you. I don't know how hard Crawford threw that ball, but it was hard. And for Rodgers, not an easy play at all. But it was a perfect strike by Crawford. The ball kind of found the glove of Rodgers. I don't know if Rodgers caught the ball or the ball caught him in that case. But he was right there, and it was bang, bang. And they got him. And it was a double play, and it won the game. So, I mean, these kind of these plays are close to being... If they go the Padres way, if anything goes wrong, it's a loss potentially. And so everything has to be perfect there. And they did it. They executed. And that's basically what they've been doing all season. So it's just an incredible year, obviously, that the Giants are having. One that we will not take for granted. Even if you're the best team in baseball, you have to execute. And the Giants have in some of the most critical moments in critical games. And last night was a great example of that. But yeah, Kevin Gosman did not have a great start, but the bullpen stepped up and went five innings and allowed just one run the rest of the way. So this Giants bullpen, which is such a ragtag group, we're talking, you know, Camilo Doval, a rookie who, by the way, has been great since being called back up in September, hasn't allowed a run and has been just attacking the strike zone. Uh, Zach Littell gave up the one run on a homer. And then Jose Alvarez, Dominic Leon, Tony Watson, had a great inning, and then Tyler Rogers escaping serious trouble there, closed it out uh, for the rest of the game. And so this Giants bullpen is kind of the unsung hero unit of this team. But, you know, those who watch this team every day recognize that they have just done an incredible job on the whole this season. So coming up next, we're going to talk about the, you know, the, the leftovers from this game and also some news about who's who's starting tomorrow and also some more roster moves chadwick trump news uh the person who's starting tomorrow's game if you haven't heard it's going to surprise you and then we're going to talk about where the giants are in the standings what the playoff odds are and all of that so stay tuned for that but first did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There's really something for everyone. When you talk to a Built Bar fan, they're definitely passionate about their favorites. If you don't know the Built Bar flavors, well, you're missing out. Coconut, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, double chocolate, salted caramel, strawberry, orange, cookies and cream, German chocolate. Getting hungry just reading that list. Want to know what my favorite flavor is? It's salted caramel. I just love that combination. Built Bar is able to make these bars taste like candy bars, but they come in with a healthy profile, 17 to 18 grams of protein, which is great, and only four to five grams of sugar, so super low in sugar. I don't know how they managed to do it. 
Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. All right, as promised, we are going to wrap up our discussion about last night's extremely exciting, eventful game. Just a clutch, clutch win for this Giants team. I said a, a minute ago, we do not take for granted on this show the fact that this team is, what, 98 and 53? 98 and 53. They are on pace. I mean, not even, I don't even want to call it pace, but let's just say they go seven and five or six and five, excuse me, the rest of the way. Just six and five, that would be the all time best record in San Francisco Giants history. This team, this team that came into the year, people, for the most part, very much expected them to be below 500. I remember going into last year, people were acting like this was one of the worst teams in baseball history, like that this team was so bad, they were going to be the worst team in Giants history, and they were among the worst teams ever in any, by any franchise, which I thought was bogus. They definitely proved that it was bogus last year, basically played like a 500 team. But then coming into this year, I mean, even I, who was optimistic, very optimistic about the direction of this team, had a bold prediction of 10 games over 500. They're 45 games over 500 right now and with the potential to increase it. I mean, the season is not over and there's and they're 45 games over 500. 45. So it's been a magical, magical run. What a shame it would be if you had to play in the wildcard game. And the team that they would have to face if the season ended today and very likely, you know, when the season actually ends, the team that they would have to face if the Giants end up in the wildcard game, is a team that I would say this Giants team should avoid at all costs. And it it has everything to do with the history. I don't think they're worried about it, but as a fan, you would be worried about it. I promise you that. So we'll get into that in a minute. But a couple of updates, roster updates, and you know, pitching plan updates. First of all, Chadwick Trump. We mentioned yesterday or the day before that he was placed on waivers. He was designated for assignment. We talked about how he may clear waivers and end up back in the Giants organization, but that didn't happen. Chadwick Trump was claimed off waivers by the Braves, and so he is gone. Chadwick Trump was a good dude, played a lot in 2020, and definitely has promise, I think, you know, probably in a platoon role against left-handed pitching, and I thought pretty good defender, good framer, behind the plate, but he is now in the Braves organization. He is in the minor leagues with the Braves, but, you know, decent chance that we see him at some point at the major league level with Atlanta and good for him. I mean, if it's a better opportunity for him, then so be it. Uh, wishing nothing but the best for Chadwick Trump, who was just a good guy, active on Twitter, just always fired up about team wins, even if he had nothing to do with it. Just a good dude and wishing him nothing but the best in Atlanta. Also, Reyes Maranta, I'm not sure we knew that he was on waivers as well, but he cleared waivers and was outrighted to AAA. So basically, he's back in AAA and off the 40-man roster. So as far as I know, that makes the 40-man roster at 39, so they do have some wiggle room, although perhaps this next piece of news will explain what's happening here. Scott Kazmir is going to start today's game against the Padres. How about this? Scott Kazmir against Vince Velasquez. It's a very odd pitching matchup when you're talking Giants versus Padres. Scott Kazmir very much, I don't want to call him a has-been, but 
you know, he didn't pitch for like four or five years or something at the major league level, came up, made a couple starts with the Giants this year, and they didn't go particularly well. Uh, he played in the Olympics this year, and his numbers in the minors aren't that great, but apparently he's been throwing the ball well, and they consider him the best option to start today's game. They're probably not expecting all that much out of him, maybe three, four, five innings if they're lucky. But he is going to start today for the Giants. So I'm actually off the top of my head. I don't remember if he is on the 40-man roster. I think that he's not because I believe they DFA'd him at some point and he cleared waivers and accepted a minor league assignment with the Giants. So having the 40-man roster at 39, that would make sense if they have to add Scott Casimir back to make this start tonight against the Padres. So that's, that's what I think is the case. And anyway... You know, look out for that matchup. And Vince Velasquez, by the way, uh, has not had a great season. So the Giants will have an opportunity potentially to win this game, score some runs tonight. And then trying to remember off the top of my head, the pitching matchup for the following day, as I pull it up here, Giants take on the Padres day game, obviously. Oh, you Darvish. So you Darvish, I think he had a good start his last time out, but the start before that, the Giants nailed him for, what, eight earned runs in just a few innings. So it'll be Logan Webb on the mound for the Giants in that finale against Darvish. And Alex Wood is going to start that first game in Colorado. Johnny Cueto is going to make a rehab appearance this weekend. So anyway, the state of the race, the Giants and Dodgers neck and neck it's just been an unbelievable race. It is unfair that one of these teams is going to have to be subjected to a single elimination game. I will not be crying too much about it if it's the Dodgers. Especially, we basically know at this point it's probably going to be the St. Louis Cardinals as the opponent to either the Giants or the Dodgers. That game will either be in LA or in San Francisco. One of those two teams is going to host the, the wild card game, and it's probably going to be the Cardinals who have a four game lead here with like they have, I think, 12 games to play. But, you know, the Reds who are directly below them have only 10 games to play. So Fangraph says that the Cardinals have a 90.4 percent chance of being in that wild card game. So if I'm the Giants, I know they don't care about this. This is ancient history to them because Kapler and this staff and a lot of the players haven't been here the whole time to see the history. but. As fans, we know the history with Paul Goldschmidt and Nolan Arenado. Those two guys have absolutely killed the Giants historically. And it's probably just like superstition. I don't think there's anything necessarily to that. Like they're not just inherently more dangerous against the Giants than they are against anybody else. And again, a lot of the pitchers are different. The players are different. So it doesn't make any sense even. But I just don't want to see... Goldschmidt and, Ar and Arenado given the chance to end the Giants season in a one game playoff. I just it just does not sit well with me. Of course, the Giants could win that game and they would be favored and rightfully so. But just don't give them the chance. And so if you needed any extra incentive, which I'm sure you did not to root for the Giants to win the division outright. That's it for me. The fact that the Cardinals have won 10 straight, that might be more relevant than Arenado Goldschmidt. The fact that they're red hot right now, 10 straight wins. They've taken, I think, two straight against the Brewers. So, you know, the Brewers are a great team and the Cardinals are just playing very, very well right now. So anyway, avoid at all costs, win the division. That's obviously the goal. So coming up tomorrow, we'll have reactions to tonight's game. I can't wait to be with you then. Uh, once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance and thank you to everyone who's done so already. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Thanks again for listening. You are now Locked on Giants.